Our next caller is Michael from Florida. Michael, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, so I, uh, in the past, I guess, 12 years, I've had two um, major weight fluctuations where I gained a lot of weight, lost a lot of weight. Uh, the first one, I lost 50 pounds, or I gained 50 pounds, lost it all. I did that. I'm actually training for a triathlon. Um, the second one, I, you know, got a job, met a girl, got comfortable, gained a lot of weight, actually got a, a serious injury. I was non weight bearing for 90 days and I, I pretty much gained all the weight back again. Um, and then I lost the weight the second time by doing your favorite exercise, doing CrossFit. Um, right. and then I kind of plateaued for a while. Um, I tried a bunch of different things. I did carb cycling, which screwed up my stomach so bad. I had to stop doing that. Um, and then I recently just com uh, completed an Ironman this past weekend. I'm actually still down here now in Florida. And um, I'm kind of like nervous that I, like, I used to love lifting weights. And now everything I've been doing is, is endurance and like beating myself up. And I, I feel like I've screwed up my metabolism over the past 12 years um, doing this up and down, up and down, and especially with the crazy endurance uh, training I've been doing the last six months. And I'm kind of done with it and I want to get into lifting again and I'm just like kind of lost. I don't really know where to start. I don't want to just go into the gym and, and do the same thing every day. So I'm just kind of looking for your advice. Yeah, no, yeah. good, good yeah, question. question for yeah. sure. So, okay. Um, okay. Why, why do you do these, these events? What are the, what's the motivation behind Ironman, triathlon, CrossFit, CrossFit? Like what's the, well, what's the real, I want to, I want to hear the truth of like the root motivation right, behind so, why you do these. So, so I grew up swimming, um, and I was actually in a really bad place during the first triathlon I did. I, I got laid off uh, from my job. I uh, I was working uh, in Atlantic City, which is a you know crazy nightlife, and I was just going down a really bad path. So I, I found a local triathlon was coming into Atlantic City. I decided to sign up for it, um, and I was really motivated to train for it. Um, I actually met my wife. She was training for an Olympic um, tri distance triathlon and kind of got into it. And then we decided to have a family and I, Iron Man seems really cool. And this was kind of my last shot to do an Iron Man for the next 10 years because uh, we ha hopefully have another one on the way. So the time to train really isn't going to be here. Um, so I did the Iron Man. The, the CrossFit thing, honestly, I moved to a new area um, and I, I needed to lose weight. And I mean, I was, I probably needed to lose like 40 pounds at the time. And I, I jumped into a CrossFit and it kicked my ass and I was like, oh, this is going to be great. And it helps. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I ended up losing a lot of weight, um, but I, I feel like it might've done more bad than good. Um, aside from the things you do say, like, you know, I was deadlifting, I was squatting, I was doing things that I haven't done in the gym before, which, you know, I was deadlifting 500 pounds at one point. Um, so I know I, long term it's not healthy for me, and especially with, like I said, the gaining weight and, and losing it all the time. But um, I'm done with the endurance stuff, at least for now. Yeah. Do Do you feel like if you don't sign up for an event or a competition, yeah. that you tend to go in the opposite Is it a direction? Motivation thing. A hundred percent. Okay. Hundred percent. Okay. So we need to address that first, Mike, because any advice I give you is not going to work unless that isn't solved. Okay. So right. you you have to change the relationship that you have with fitness and exercise. Cause right now fitness and exercise is you're using it like a drug. Okay. So whatever the other drug is, whether it be not moving and eating a lot of food or whatever, what you're doing is you're replacing that drug with fitness. And because fitness is better for you, gets you to move. Um, it's not as bad as maybe what the other drug was. So we tend to not identify the fact that it can also be damaging. And I've had lots of, I've had situation with clients that, you know, quit smoking and then they started using exercise like smoking and overdid yeah, it in that right. direction as well. So I want you to change your motivation. You said you're having another baby. Um, I don't know if this will work for you. This has worked for other clients of mine, but I, I want you to focus on longevity and quality of life. So what I mean by quality of life is like, think of the most important things that you have in your life. Maybe being a father, being productive at work, being a good husband, what kind of workouts make you better at those things and keep reminding yourself of that while you're going through what I'm about to recommend. Because if you do that, you'll okay. stay on the right path. If you sure. maintain the kind of relationship that you've had in the past with exercise, the advice I'm going to give you right now is not going to work. It'll be very short term. And at some point you'll either fall off and then rebound by 
signing up for another event going or going extreme in another direction or by giving up entirely because it just doesn't feel good. Okay. So the root yeah. has to be there. But once you can do that and remind yourself of that, I think for someone like you, a program like Maps Performance, I'm glad you went that would way. Be a I wasn't great, sure you're going to go that way, and I do like that a lot for him. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you have the athletic background, I think you'll appreciate the functional component of Maps Performance. There's a mobility component in there, so I think it'll uh, you'll enjoy that. So you can do some kind of fitness every yeah. single day. Brand new stimulus in a lot of different directions. Totally. It'll make you feel good, right. but it, you you but you got to remind yourself of that route. What's making me a better person today? Do I feel better today? Do that. Quality of life, you know, longevity, that'll put you in the right, right. direction. Otherwise, like I said, this advice I'm giving I, you is not going to help. I also like the idea of MAPS performance too. I just recently was sharing with the guys that I had a, a phone call with my nephew who just moved from MAPS Anabolic is now going to performance. And I was trying to to coach him that you have to complete, you have to change your mindset going into this program. And it's all around movement. And so what Sal's saying about quality of life and the child and all this, like I would totally reframe the way I look at exercise. It's like, one, my goal is like, what's the the least amount I can do to get the most results? Because I'd rather spend more time with my family than in a gym or hammering myself training for like an Ironman. So that's first and foremost. And then I want to be able to do things like squat down and play with my son while he's on toy and not feel like my back is killing me and my knees are killing me. So when I exercise, I'm doing movements that are going to support that and that is like a win for me it's that's more of a win than hitting a new pr in the deadlift or the squat and so when you approach this program you know approach it with goals like that is hey i've never really focused on my squat depth or the my movement quality can i look at these exercises watch the the you know the model that's demoing them and my goal isn't can i get the weight way up and get stronger in this movement my goal is can i make this movement look perfect like mm-hmm. i'm the model can i make it look better than what they're doing it and and approach your your exercise like that yeah you're reexamining a lot of these familiar exercises that uh, you've been in a race to get through uh, and I don't yeah. know if that resonates at all, but for me, like I, I, I very much have had that mentality that you've had in terms of trying to find the next super hard punishing thing to get involved in. And it was always a race for me to get there. And I just, I just felt like I always needed that. But this is, this is one of those things where you can re-examine a lot of these types of exercises and find out the real value. If you just slow down, if you slow down, your, your body is going to benefit tremendously. And, and to, to be able to kind of like shift your mindset towards that is going to be able to take it more in a sustainable uh, direction in terms of longevity, right? The, the, the race really is sustainability for you. What can you stick with the longest and not want to just jump into the next thing and, and punish yourself? Yeah, it, it's going to be a practice, okay? Not a workout. Now, you're definitely yeah. going to work out. But I want you to think of it as a practice, a daily or almost daily practice, whether it's one of the foundational workouts or a mobility session. Mass performance gives you the option to be working out or doing a mobility session, one of those five days a week. Um, you know, Three of those workouts will be a little longer, and the other two will be shorter kind of mobility sessions. But go into it like a pra- – like think of it as a practice, so very zen. Okay, That's the mentality I want you to go into it with and use that, yeah. that same competitive – mindset that got you to lose 50 pounds to do a a triathlon or whatever. Think of yourself, Zen, quality of life. It's a practice. Once it clicks, you're going to find this rhythm that's going to feel very good, very balanced and serve you well, rather than pushing you to red line and then causing you to stop and, you know, continue the cycle. And by the way, you mentioned your metabolism being ruined. It's not ruined. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. So don't worry. Don't think you're like, oh my God, I damaged my body. What am I going to do? Your body, your body responded this, the way it evolved to respond, and it will do. It will respond the way it evolved to respond if you do what we're telling you. Yeah. If you do what we're telling you, what you'll find is your metabolism will start to not worry so much about being so hyper efficient. You're going to build some muscle. You'll start to move better, and you'll develop a comfortable, uh, you know, good relationship with exercise where it feels not ex- not just exhilarating because I know you know what that feels like or punishing, or like I survived, like that's okay occasionally, but the kind of relationship you develop with exercise is, like I said, a practice. Like this sets me up, and boy, can I be a great you know, father, business owner, employee, husband, whatever. It's going to improve the quality of your life long term. So 
go into it that way, and I think you'll have tremendous success. And if you don't have Maps Performance, we're going to send that over to you right now. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I definitely don't have it. Um, right. Yeah, my wife will be pleased too. No more 15-hour training weeks. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Definitely. you're a maniac, dude. Just tell her, say, hey, look, the guy said to replace my workouts with sex. So we're going to have to do a lot of sex. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Done. You're welcome. There you go. All right. Thanks, Michael. All right. Thanks, guys. No problem. Yeah, that's the uh, the old. I, I had. This isn't like the most common thing, but I had. It's pretty common. There's a lot of these. It's I mean, pretty common. I wouldn't say it's like a majority, but I definitely had those clients that they'd finish one race. Got to work out for the next. Do the next. I'd Gotta actually find say the next. it's the like next. This, it's like they had to do it that way. Yeah, you know? I'd say it's really common. Uh, but what is hard is getting somebody who's into all these things to convince them that that's their issue well, and they it's, have not to a, admit it's not it. a good yeah. thing, yeah. right? They all. They, I mean, you when you're in this on this track, a lot of times, it's a good thing for you. Like, oh, I'm going to sign up for the next Ironman. Oh, I'm going to sign up for the next this. I'm going to sign up for the next that, and they don't realize that they have this pattern of oh wow. Unless I'm signed up for something like this, I'm terrible at being consistent with my diet and my training. You know, is there something else underlining there, or is this yeah. a good well, behavior to have for the rest of my life? There's all the gurus out there that they're probably following that you know totally like really you know hype this up. Like you gotta you gotta get up, you gotta get up at four a.m. and like beat you. Know, like there's just so much of that that this message here is just not elevated enough yeah i had a female client that she just was just repetitive over and over again and she got to the point where she was doing like an event every other month and what finally got her to open her eyes was when she could not lose she could not get leaner eating under 1200 calories running 20 plus miles a week and lifting weights four to five days a week <laughs> yeah. and she's like why can't i get any leaner I'm, I can't get below, you know, I don't remember what it was, like below 20% body fat. And I said, well, this is all the stuff I've been telling you. And she finally like, okay, I give up. <laughs> I I'll surrender. Do, I'll do what you say. A year later, yeah. <laughs> she was eating 20-something hundred calories a day and leaner than ever and working out way, way less. It works. So it totally works. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.